Get away, you lucky fowls. That's mine. Well, hello there, stranger. Whew. You're a real bright and shiny one, aren't you? <laughs> I ask you for your name, but sadly you got no mouth to speak with, or hands to shake with, or nose to look down with. So we're gonna have to find another way. See, what you'll find is, even though you're no longer in your body, your body's still inside of you. If that makes any sense. So, if you understand what I'm saying, um, blink over my hand here. Ooh, well look at that. You're a blinking genius. <laughs> yeah, I knew you were special. See all them poor souls down there, lost in the waves? I didn't choose any of them. I chose you. See, I, I just sometimes get a sort of a, a hunch, or what's a better word? Notion? No, a better word than that. Ah! A premonition. A premonition when a soul's worth pulling up. You see that tower out there? Big scary one? That's where I'm taking you to see the gatekeeper. To be judged. I'm gonna present your case. Tell her the whole story of your entire life from prow to stir. Now if she's impressed, I get paid the Bitcoin and you get yourself a spot in her magnificent city. If she ain't. I eat seagull for dinner again, and uh, you, well, <laughs> we don't have to worry about that, because I am the best orator you'll find on these sickly waters. Class A storyteller, believe you me. <laughs> no, shut up, you trash birds. You had your chances. It wasn't my fault you were no good. Lay about. Satisfactory clock watchers. I got some words for you. <laughs> Sorry, you had to hear that. <laughs> Ooh. So sure, maybe I'm not the most verbose storyteller out there, but I know how to spin a yarn if I'm given something to work with. And that's where you come in. Your life. You're gonna show it to me. I wanna see exactly what made you so absolutely great. So just think back to the very beginning, the first thing that you can remember I'm gonna send you there. But understand, no matter how much you like it, you're not gonna be able to stay, all right? Every time you blink, you're going to jump forward in time. Could be a second, could be five years. That's just how this thing works. Alrighty then. I hope he's ready for this. Now, the next time that you blink, I'm gonna send you back. Don't be afraid, and don't try to fight it. The thing to remember about blinking is, well, it's only a matter of time. I'm touched, you in... And just try to enjoy it this time. Look at that sun. We've got a long, beautiful day ahead of us. Why are you smiling like that? You must re- mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Let's go get you some seashells. What do you say? You see that big spiky plant over there? That's called Nagave. Eleven years from now, that plant will die so it can give birth to this tall, amazing tree covered in flowers. We'll have to keep our eyes on that one. The day really slipped away, didn't it? Oh well, days have a tendency to do that, I guess. Now where's the first page of my piece? I can't find Okay. Go ahead, kid. <laughs> Look at that! There's your little hand. We have to make him do this every birthday. <laughs> That's a great idea. It won't really be something to see how we grow. Don't you? <laughs> Sounds good, honey. I'm sending it to my mentor next week. It has to be perfect. Well, sounds pretty perfect to me. Yeah, what do you like about it? I like the music. That's very specific. I also like the person playing it. Yeah, I worry that might have something to do with it. Look at his little face. What do you think he's thinking about? Uh, I don't know. Probably solving the problems in the universe. So, do you think he's going to be smart? I don't see why not. I mean, we're both pretty smart. <laughs> yeah, but... No, it's not derivative. At least I didn't think it was. Do you think you could tell the other members of the selection committee what I just told you? Right. No, I'm sorry. I... I guess I just put a lot of expectation on this call. Okay, I understand. Thank you for considering my piece, John. It really means a lot. Oh, that's sure a little mess of color. You know, if you keep working at it, one day you'll be able to paint exact. See? That used to be my piano. My dad gave it to me. He loved music. Fled his home country just to have a chance to pursue it. God. He made me practice so much. I hated it at first. I think he hoped to make it further than conducting the high school choir. Never said anything though. He was what you might call the strong silent type. I believe I grew up in the snow, and I came all the way out here to the beach. I don't even know how I got here. Your dad got his job and I just came with him. Okay, Benny. Are you ready to see something really special? I just don't want him to get attached. Seen. Yeah, what's wrong with that? We can't keep him, can we? I mean, I'm pretty much definitely allergic, so no, right? No. We'll find someone to take him. 
but while he's here, I say we call him Ernie. <laughs> Little Ernie. Fits him, doesn't it? Oh, he's so cute. He's so sweet. Now play the C major chord I taught you. Remember? There you go! Doesn't that make you feel happy? Like you just want to jump up and down? Now what about C minor? You remember how to play that one? Very good! Just one note different. But that one sounds sad, doesn't it? Amazing what a difference one little change can make on how a person feels. <gasps> sort of like me and your little friend on your piano there. She was in grad school studying composition. I never met anyone like her. I just prayed to God I could somehow keep up. I think she liked that I was a professor. Gave me a certain gravitas in her eyes, you know, which I very quickly lost. God, she dragged me to so many places. It was wonderful. Where would you want to go, if you could only go to one? <sighs> now, you know the ancient Egyptians believe cats had godlike powers? They would have worshipped our little Ernie, can you imagine? <laughs> Sorry Ernie, born in the wrong time period I guess. I mean, I was a gifted kid, but he's brilliant. We need to get him into serious piano lessons. Sure, but you know anyone who might be a good teacher for him? What? I, I mean, in the city, sure. Not out here, I don't. I mean, I know someone who might be up to the task. She's very gifted. Richard, no one in this town knows anything. Maybe I'll just have to do it. I have my interview in five minutes and I completely forgot to feed him. I forgot what a great father you are. Just focus on the interview, honey. I got this. <laughs> Excuse me, of course, sir. It's all organized into folders sitting ready on my kitchen table. They will literally be on your desk when you get in. What could possibly happen to the files between now and tomorrow morning? We are fine. When 
When's he coming? I'm flying him out in February, remember? You know, I think he was pretty surprised that I could actually afford to do that. Hey, why not? You're a working woman now. I guess that's true. Don't let it go to your head, but yeah. Please let the cat know. It's time to use the litter box, though. Baby steps. He's got one eye. This is called a metronome. We use it to measure time so we don't get lost in the music. I want you to start using it before Grandpa comes to visit. You know, my father once told me, when I was about your age, the only way to fight against time is to create a work of genius, which might live on after you're gone. So I asked him, what about your children? Thinking, you know, I might be a work of genius just as I was. He said, yes, I suppose. If you made a work of genius, I could live on through that as well. <laughs> no such luck for me. But I do wonder what he'll think about you. You really need to stay in time with the metronome, okay? Subdivide the time. One e and a two e and a... There you go, buddy. Okay, now keep a firm grip on it, just like that. Oh my. Well, don't think you like that, pal. Sorry, buddy. Turn around, L. So we can photograph you. I'm just really behind right now. Why did... Ernie! Ernie! Buddy! Ernie! Ernie! Ernie, we need you! God, Elle, no. what if you got eaten by a coyote? My sinuses would be eternally. What did you just say? No, I... So you're saying it's a coincidence that it disappears for weeks and then comes back with a huge belly? But Ernie's a boy. And you're sure about that? I thought I was. I'm still not understanding how you let this happen. I don't know. He keeps coloring the grass blue, the ocean green, and then the sky red. What's wrong with that? Are you able to pick up the new book? Yes. The Manila Galleon was of particular interest. No, I meant Benny's book. Oh, yeah. That's what you mean. It's expensive, right? No, no. Can't put a price on learning. I mean, they did. And it's stupid to say. I know, it seems impossible that you could ever play something so complex. But just take it one day at a time. Trust me. You're really getting there, honey. Next week, we'll start working on your other hand. Listen to him, Richard. 
I'm enlisting him in that competition. I thought you said competitions took the joy out of playing music. Not if you win. brackets on each side. The quiz said find the zero, and he just drew an arrow pointing to it. <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? I mean, everything is... I want that box full by the time I come in there. If you don't play with it anymore, we're getting rid of it. Congratulations, B! First of many, I'd assume. Why are you always out here taking photos? You know, if you really want to take a photo of something cool, you should take a photo of this. Chloe! Oh shoot, I think I gotta go. But, um, try to take a photo of me running into my house. I'm pretty fast, so I don't think you'll be able to, but you can try. He's about to play for us. Wow, L, he's unbelievable. My God, I didn't realize our head of accounting was raising a musical prodigy. Didn't you used to be a composer yourself, Elle? No, I don't know if I'd say that. But you used to write your own music, right? Yeah, but I haven't done that in years. Not since he was four or five years old. And, and what do you do, Richard? He's a professor. Of what? The class is world history. My name is Mr. Isaac. The class will be broken up into hey, units. Look on your desk. I wrote you something. This is a quote. I want each of you to write it down. Not doodle on the sidelines, not stare off into space. Okay, now I will go on to the next slide. Chloe, tell me, what did the quote say? Um, right, I definitely know this. You were taking notes, weren't you, Chloe? Oh, yes, of course. Come on, dude, help me out. Come on, Chloe. We're all waiting. So those who do not remember the past repeat the past. That's right, right? Indeed it is. Though I'd prefer you to answer without the help of your boyfriend next time. If we do not keep an accurate account of the past, we are destined to embarrass ourselves in all sorts of ways. I tried to convince your father not to buy you that thing, but he insisted. Half suspect he bought it for himself. <laughs> the little guys are pretty cute though, I will admit that. Definitely seen you next door, but I didn't realize you guys had become friends. Oh 
Oh, sure. We sit together in history class. I don't know what I'd do without old Benny. Very sweet. Thank you for playing this game with him. Your dad just thanked me for hanging out with you? That's a very interesting detail. Okay, shut up, shut up, shut up. I really want... It's called a magnet school. It's about an hour away in a town called Burton. I know the change can be scary, but I just want you to go in. So what do you think, Benjamin? You think you could excel in that sort of an environment? Sorry, he gets very shy. Oh, not to worry. If he's as gifted as you say he is, shyness is no problem. Why don't you two come back closer to the end of the year for... As you can see, there are some very fast runs in there, and a lot of stuff I've not taught you properly yet. So no pressure, I just want you to try, and we can see if you start enjoying it. just like to see you really rise to the occasion just this once. I wish I had the option of going to a school like that when I was your age. I wouldn't be working this boring job or living in this boring town, I'll tell you that. that Ben you can talk to your friend after you practice oh my god is she really calling you again what is she obsessed with you Keep that up, you're sounding really good. Anubis, in the presence of Ma'at, who you remember is the goddess of truth and justice, would weigh the deceased soul against a feather, determining whether it was worthy of entering into her land of the dead. And what if they are deemed unworthy? Well, you can see that ugly fur ball under the scale. That is Amamet, and she's got, and yes, hey, that's a she. Mr. Kid, the head of a crocodile, over here, that's fur of a lion. Look at it. See, and the body of a hippopotamus. Though I would not say that to her face. Now, as you can see, she is ready to devour any of the deceased who do not pass judgment. Sort of like me with your weekly quizzes. So I am not <laughs> quite sure why I don't hear Ew, more frantic why is he so right scary now. looking? Okay, I'll call you when I'm leaving my house. You better pick up. Slightly worried about having him change schools just as he's starting to make friends. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the only reason she keeps coming here is to play that game you bought for him. Okay, listen, I don't claim to understand the motives of children. Richard, Benny has a chance here. A real chance to be really good at something. I mean... Lights out. You need to be rested for tomorrow. Memory consolidates when you're asleep. So if you go to sleep now, you will awaken a master. Trust me. Richard, tell your son to turn the lights off. Benny, mom says turn the lights off. Not mom says, you say. Benny.
In your own time, Benjamin, we are very excited to hear. you in after that I'm not even sure I'd want you at that school and I could tell you were having sounds like you really nailed it kiddo it's not a matter of him nailing it. he sounded like a professional musician at 11 years old <laughs> now that's your mother saying that you know she doesn't consider kids to be professional musicians <laughs> because they're not what are you talking about performers yes musicians Destroy. You don't have to open it right now if you don't want to. What do you mean? Of course he wants to. I just don't want him to feel pressure. Sure. Open it whenever you want, sweetie. What does it say? Give him time to read it. Why are you being silent, Ben? We want him home from school for a while. Just until this nasty thing clears. Hey, Elle, would you mind taking a quick walk with me down to my office? There's a small clerical thing I need you to look at before I can let you two go. Oh, yes, of course. I'll be right back, Benny, okay? Just maybe five minutes, kiddo, okay? Just such a crucial time in his development. He shouldn't be confined to his room. Yeah, look, well, having him home for all means I can spend more time with him, you know? This isn't video game time. I want you to figure out something actually productive to do while you're home from school. No. You mean young Vincent? <laughs> well, ever since he got sick, all he does is he start. And Mr. Benjamin Brin has been awarded first place. here to learn to be painters. You are here to learn to be artists. And although I was hired to teach you, it is a sham. There is no teaching art. So don't just sit there slack, John. Make art, you ponies. Oof. How very wacky and fun these are. Is 
It's very zany. Very kitsch. Lucky for you, the world is always in need of more greeting card artists. There you go, Mr. Brin. Feel each shape. Oh, <laughs> you fiend! I want you all to take a long look at what Mr. Brin has done here. You see, he has reached down deep within himself and created a masterpiece. I pray you have a stronghold on yourself, Mr. Brin. For I fear a talent like these you may soon be swept away by a whirlwind. ironic sincerity of this piece is so sincerely ironic. I know that lots of agents gave you lots of cards, and it all probably feels weird and alienating and the opposite of what being a starving artist is supposed to feel like. But if I can teach you one thing, it's that if opportunity knocks, you open the door. Making a living isn't selling out. I wish I had thought of it that way. This show last week, truly stunning. I've never been prouder. And one little thing, a birdie told me that Elba Preston Hooper gave you her card. Now, I want you to cut that card into little pieces and feed it to an alley cat. Elba Preston Hooper is not in the business of the arts. Elba Preston Hooper is in the business of business and you, child. You are no business, man. Don't worry. You're not selling your soul. I've got a good feeling about you. We're going to make a lot of money together. To actually making some money with one's art. Lord knows I could never do it. Now that you've made it, tell me, what are you going to do with it? Besides buying me fancy dinners like this every week, obviously. Because I can get used to this. <laughs> oh, this looks delicious. Stop. Is that a is it Benjamin Brin? Oh my god. I think it is. All places. Hey honey. Your work's incredible. The new stuff is wowing us all. Um I've had an idea. You know, the critics are fickle. How about if you go back to your roots? Paint something meaningful, personal, close to your heart. Uh, gotta go. Love you lot. Mwah. Hey, Ben. Don't even pick up this call, okay? I mean it. I'm just calling to inform you that I went to the doctor today, and, well, I'm, I'm going to be a little sick for a while, but really, I, I don't want you worrying about it at all. 
you're at such an important moment in your career, and I'm just so proud of you. This is nothing but a little bump in the road for me. I'm going to be fine. Okay? So don't even... But that's enough from me. Now, you'll hear from the person who I believe is the single thing in the world my wife was most proud of. Her magnum opus, so to speak. Huh. I think you all know who I'm talking about. Benny? Go on, B. Say something. Again? Look, you know, I talk to big, important people. People who could change your life every day. What the hell am I supposed to say? What do you want me to say? That I haven't heard from my star client in six months? This is getting ridiculous. You've got to get it together. Love you lots. Mwah. Benny, guess who's calling? Well, here's the call. We're finished. We're done so kaput. It's over. Would you shut the hell up, Tabitha? I'm trying to fire a client in here. Who? Some washed up stick up his ass too good to sell brick. Probably isn't even listening to this message, but you know, Mama's got to put her rage somewhere. Oh, shoot it. Am I still on? <laughs> hey, B. Just calling to tell you. I think I'm still in the house. She's everywhere here, son. I can't move without. Take whatever you want. With your mother gone, I'm hoping to finally live without all the clutter. Yeah, I think you did the right thing. By the way, she didn't want you to see her like that. She just wanted you to focus on your work. That was the only thing that mattered to her. Look, it's unbelievable, Benny. It's like... Is that, is that really you? It, it's Chloe. Your neighbor. My god, I can't believe this. It's been years. I, I just walked through the entire show. It's unbelievable. I'd love to walk through it again with you. I mean, if you were down for that. I just can't believe that my entire childhood, I was living next to a bona fide genius. I should have guessed it. I mean, with all those little drawings you did. And your mom. I always heard her playing piano from next door, but I didn't know she wrote the actual music. Hey, so not to be forward, but what are you doing after this? 
Maybe we could get a drink or something? I'd really love to catch up. I, I can't believe everything that's happened to you. I want to hear all about it. Now would you look at that? <laughs> I cannot believe my luck. You finally hit the jackpot, Flapjack. With all the nobody nothings dying every day, you finally sink your hook into a... Whoa! Well, there you are. Well, hello, sir. If I realized I would have cleaned up, I'm just used to fishing up a different class of soul. <laughs> I mean, sure, I've had scientists, a couple college athletes here or there, but... Whew, internationally renowned painter? <laughs> the gatekeeper's gonna eat you up. Hey, speaking of that, why don't we give your story a test run? Maybe you can help me out with the word choice, since, you know, I'm still working on that. Let's see if I'm getting all the strokes right, the proper... Composition, if you catch my drift. <laughs> Forget about it. All right, here we go. Gatekeeper, before you stands the soul of a great man. Now, would you describe yourself as a happy kid or a lonely one? His childhood was a happy one, growing up in a loving home raised by loving parents in a quaint village by the sea. And, uh, what'd you say your mom was? A composer or an accountant? His mother was a composer who, with the need to support her family, took a job as an accountant. How would you describe her as a teacher? More encouraging or demanding? Kind of like your champion. Therefore, as his piano teacher, she was ever encouraging, teaching him to recognize the greatness within. How about that neighbor girl, huh? What was she to you? Was she your best friend or first love? Now be honest here. I don't. Music became the only thing he truly cared about, even more than his first love, Chloe. And although he gave it everything he had, he was still rejected from the conservatory his mother desperately wanted him to attend. Now from that moment forward, his mother gave up on him. She knew he didn't have what it took to be a truly great musician. But little did she know, she just picked the wrong medium, right? See, when he was 12 years old, he got sick. And he had to stay inside for an entire year. And in that year, he rediscovered a talent he'd forgotten. Painting. Sure, he loved finger painting as a child. Color and shape were the first languages he learned to speak. But for the first time, he saw it in a more serious light. He was accepted into an exclusive art school where he caught the eye of an esteemed professor who launched his work into the national spotlight. Now be quiet, all of you. With expectations on his career mounting, he stalled himself into bankruptcy, which turned out to be a blessing, for it wasn't until he returned home to the house he grew up in that he began work on what would ultimately be considered his masterpiece. I said shut up, you, you scum dolls, you mucky fowls. you're saying. I hear what you're saying. I had assumed as much anyway. I should probably 
tell you. Those things, they're not regular gulls. They're liar birds. They're what becomes of souls who try to lie to the gatekeeper. And once they try that, they're never allowed near her city again. I get to feel them bad for not defending them right, so they just stay on with me. Living reminders of my oratory shortcomings. Oh, yeah, good thinking. I'll be back to get you once I'm done with this one. Hopefully you won't be seeing him again. <laughs> You're a fully bitten sap, you know that? Just look at him. Poor fool doesn't know what he's in for. Now don't think that I haven't dealt with people like you. You're ashamed of something. Something so terrible, you're trying to blink right past it. Because if the gatekeeper knew, she'd have to dream up fresh new hells to punish someone as worthless as you. And I'm sure you're right. I'm sure you're the rottenest soul that I ever fished out of that black muck. And I should have thrown you back and sanitized my paw as soon as I laid eyes on you. But it's too late for that. We're in this together. And the gatekeeper, she'll see right through your fake lies as if they were glass. So I'm gonna ask you again to start from the very beginning. And this time, I want the truth. This ain't a schoolyard staring contest, buddy. Now you best close those beady little eyes of yours before we run out of time. Not this. Now play the C major chord I taught you. Remember? Come on, keep blinking. I, I, I haven't found it yet. Doesn't that make you feel happy? Like... You know, my father once told me, when I was about your age... This. Stay here. What did your mother hear on that phone call? Keep your eyes open. I need to see. Getting it. Hello? Yes, of course. This is Elle, his daughter. <gasps> oh. I oh, see. What is it? She knew she hadn't yet lived up to her father's expectations. And now, she never could. Let's keep going. Need to stay in time with the metronome, okay? You. This is for me eternally indebted. What did you just say? This isn't a trip down memory lane. I need you to stay focused. God, honey, I'm worried too. I know, sweetie. Yes, I understand about the cat. Let's keep going. Let's try. 
try this again. The death of those cats must have taught you a terrifying lesson that simply being alive wasn't enough. So then you went to work to make yourself sensational. Listen to him, Richard. When we get back, let's make Dad up and go down to the beach. What do you say? I want to celebrate. And I'd find you adorable if only you didn't piss me off so much. Ah, you hear that, Benny? Our entire relationship distilled into two lines. Oh, come on. Hey, Elle, would you mind taking a quick walk with me down to my office? Is we can focus and make sure you staying engaged. Can you please try to speak a little softer? Keep your eyes open. Staying engaged. Can we please try to speak a little softer? I really don't want you to hear us talking about this. I mean, what's the point? What's the point? What do you mean? What do you mean? What's the point? What does that mean? What's the point of any of it? If he's never going to get any better. Okay. Let's not say that. Okay? We know we don't mean it. I know I don't. I know. I mean, what if he heard one of us saying something like that? I'd never forgive myself. I... It's okay. He's asleep. But it's okay. I see. You got sick. You howled at the moon, at the top of your lungs. sick for a long time, weren't you? Sicker than healthy kids are supposed to get? Well, no matter how painful it gets, I need you to remember. This isn't video game time. I want you to figure out something actually productive to do while you're home from school. Try writing with it. Well, hello, Benny. <laughs> it was your grandfather's, but I used it in college to write lyrics. <laughs> exactly. It was very artsy. Actually, I was just good at fooling your dad. Made him think I was some kind of genius.
why don't you write the story of your life so far? And then what you're going to do once you get better. Music became the only thing he truly cared about, even more than his first love, Chloe. First love? Okay, Benny. Is that why you didn't sneak out with me? Why not just tell me? You do realize I waited for you out in the alley for like an hour, right? Ugh. So anyway, back to the story, I guess. He'd love finger painting as a child. Color and shape were the first languages he learned to speak. You are going to be in there for about 30 minutes, so try to get comfortable. Knock, knock. You're gonna be so annoyed with me, but I couldn't help but overhear Chloe reading loud from what I think was your story the other night. I know, I know, I promised myself I wouldn't eavesdrop, but really love to read it if you'd let me. What do you say? You know I'm s- can't. Just go in there and tell him you loved it. I'm sorry, I just can't. I just- not right now. Okay, don't worry. Just go to bed. I'll talk to you. Hey, B. Just want you to know that Mom loved your story. She's just- you know, I think it was just very- Emotional for her to read. I, I, I thought it was great. I mean, look at this. His childhood was a happy one. Growing up in a loving home, raised by loving parents in a quaint village by the sea. I mean, I'm certainly glad you feel that way. But what I want to know is, where did you learn to write so well? All those... If he's ever in pain, all he needs to do is press that red button and the drug will administer itself. Thank you so much. You know, I know my wife would normally want to thank you herself. No, I understand it hits mothers the hardest, this sort of thing. Thank you for understanding. It's been... Uh... Hey, 
Eddie. Yeah, hey man, it's Richard. Listen, I know L's been missing in action, but I just want you to understand things have taken a really bad turn here. Yeah, no, that's not going to be possible. To be honest, your whole tone is pissing me off right now. Yes, I understand you have a business to run. It's a very <laughs> cliche thing to say to me in a time like this. Okay, well, well then I guess all I can say is screw you too. I said... Funny, you know. What? You're too scared to talk to me? Well, just so you know, I know you're faking. Because if you were really sick, like actually sick, you'd have told me already. I happen to actually know about this stuff. So the fact that you are faking. I remember when you were just four years old. Mom was going through a pretty tough time. Not as tough as now, but yeah, our music had been rejected and she's having trouble adjusting to her quiet little life out here. And I feared that yeah, I was losing her. But then you played this on the piano and it's your little hands reaching up for the keys. She just couldn't believe how gifted you were. And once she heard that, well, it was like you brought her right back to me. So, I was wondering if maybe you could do that trick again. Try closing your eyes. See if you can remember. Wait, is that? That's my piece. How did you figure out how to play that? Keep playing, B. She's listening. It's okay. I'm just so happy she's here. We've got to show this cat some real love. She's been through more than we can even imagine. Like, she didn't even care to visit? No, I mean, I don't think he's told her. And you're just letting them be? You're just letting that be? I don't know her step. You know how Benny is. She lost her mother a year ago. You knew that, right? No, but what does that have to do with... Okay, do we have her dad's number? I don't know. Check the book. Okay, I'm calling now. Honey...
You do realize this is really nothing special to me. I've seen this all before. I, um... I was thinking about what you said in the story the other day. And how I reacted to it. I feel kind of bad. I shouldn't have done that. But... Hey! What are you looking at? Don't look up there. Look at me. I'm talking to you. be in the room when you see what it is. So maybe if you close your eyes, I can give it to you and I'm gonna leave. Close your eyes now, okay? something new I'm working on. So you're writing again? Ah, it's just a melody that came to me. It feels good to play it. It's sad. Yeah, well, that would make sense. But do you like it? I mean, yeah. I love everything you do. What do you like about it? Ah, uh, not this old trap. Go on. I'm waiting. Well, it made me feel like... Like... Like if the unspeakable darkness I'm carrying can be so well expressed... You know, for a while now, I've wondered if I'm just not a good enough storyteller. If I just don't have grand enough words, can't tell grand enough stories. But grand words and stories, I think they may be overrated. Ugh. I know just what to tell her. Watch for her now. I've seen the gatekeeper take many forms depending on the soul I bring her. But once you see her, you'll know. Believe me. I should go get ready. Don't worry. We got this. I think.
she is. Wish me luck. Gatekeeper, before you sits the soul of a child who died before he could grow old. That means she's ready to hear your story. You know, I never told you how much I loved your story. It's really so imaginative. And the person you wrote about is such an interesting and intense guy. My only issue was, well, I didn't like him very much. So, I wanted to read you something I wrote for you, which is about the Benny I've known for 11 years now. It's called The Great Life of Benjamin Brin. <clears throat> Benjamin Brin was born into an ordinary home to an ordinary mother and father in a small town by the sea. His mother was a composer, or at least that's what she dreamed be. So, when her own dreams didn't pan out, she began to dream for him. But then, when he was just 11 years, years old, he got sick and was forced to stay inside for an entire year. And in that year, he began to worry that he hadn't lived enough. So he made up a story of the great life he thought he wanted to live. Which only made him forget the great life he already had. How he had filled a new home with light and joy and promise. How he met a girl, his neighbor, who felt all alone in the world and he made her feel okay again. And how, even when he was sick, he still gave his parents hope. How he reminded them of exactly who they were after they had all forgotten. So when he knew he was going to go, he was okay. Because he'd already lived a great life, a full life. And he was everything he needed to be, just as he was. She accepts. Close your eyes now, and keep them closed. <laughs> Why is he smiling She's like that? You in. It must be somewhere that he likes. 